So we have Mr. Alex Buckley uh, asking a question, pros and cons of different grips, matchups, and release types. And say so pretty broad, it's pretty wide. So I but understand what the grip is. Let's um, na narrow matchup. it down. What's that? Let's try narrowing it down. Yeah, yeah. So matchup is not a term that I use, um, and uh, release types also not a term that I use. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the golf machine was written many years ago, and, and in it they said grip and then grip type mm -hmm. variable. Yes. So you have multiple different variations. So the variations start by how much pronation or the supination you want to add to the lead wrist. So a typical grip would maybe have 40 degrees of, of pro, uh, uh, pronation at address mm -hmm. that would have a relatively strong grip. Mm -hmm. um, Bryson on one end of the spectrum would be vertical, zero degrees. You've got uh, Zach Johnson really big. who would be the other end of the, of the, of the spectrum, as yep. low as possible and the most uh, uh, pronated. Yep. And then you have Paul Azinger who had a very high and supinated the most. So uh, Paul and Zach would have different uh, angled hinging going through the shot um, than Bryson who would have a full swivel of the lead wrist yes. coming through the shot. So if that's what he means by matchups and release mm -hmm. types, well, you know, there, there are a few pieces that go with other pieces that mm -hmm. we cataloged 100 years ago. Yeah, so let's... Or in 68. So let's do it like 69. this. Um, AMM. Yep. Seen that. I think the average is about 30 degrees of lead wrist extension. Yep. Let's start there. So the, the dorsiflexion or the lead wrist extension, mm -hmm. flexion, uh, palmar flexion, uh, is... And then, so even before you get into that, where would you like to see in gears... Uh, how much extension? So that's a, uh, because the wrist is a coupled motion. Yes. Um, the more uh, pronation you have, mm -hmm. the more radial deviation will look like uh, dorsiflexion in the lead wrist. So mm -hmm. those are coupled. So I remove those out. So it's it's about a one to one. Okay. So if you have thirty degrees of pronation, you have about thirty degrees of dorsiflexion. So if you were to build a pattern, your ideal pattern would it be like that? It would be that. To more, that pronation. To more. Thirty to fifty degrees of pronation, we were somewhere in that ballpark. It's pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then I kind of like that because, as the golfer is coming through, the uh, internal rotation of the lead shoulder mm -hmm. can be coupled with the max supination of the lead wrist, kind of creating a radial lock as you come through and keeping a very very stable club base. You do not don't you do not want a grip situation where it relies on supination, which can now add to external rotation of the lead shoulder and really get a screwdriver cooked in here. Okay. Now, um, when you're doing this, again, we're going to talk about your, your stock ideal pattern. Is there anything that you're looking for to, in terms of the matchup of the trail arm to what you just talked about with your lead arm? Well, sure. You, uh, the golf machine would have a double uh, action grip. Um, you know, you want to have both of the hands working, rel obviously working together. So yes. I wouldn't want... Um, the lead pronation to be offset with trail pronation as well, and then you're going to be holding it pretty mm -hmm. funny. Um, so as long as you've got a relatively standard taut grip where mm -hmm. the lifeline of the trail hand covers the lead thumb, yep. where the, the lead wrist pronation would be dictating the amount of the trail wrist attachment location. Okay, so let's go with uh, 30 <coughs> degrees. Let's start with that for sure. and make it a simple number. Because again, you could put that guy on here, and then you could also simultaneously keep him on here and start to do all sorts of different stuff with right. the upper arm. Right. So the internal, <coughs> internal rotation. So I would. So I would what would you want to see that? that? Yeah. I would classify that in three positions. Yep. Where you had uh, <coughs> position one, two, and three. So I would have the trail wrist set to max external rotation, with the trail hand okay. max. Okay. So now I'm going to drive you a little nuts. Sure. Okay. We're How gonna, many degrees would that be? That no, right? no, no, no. Uh, let, let's kind of look at this as something a little bit more simplistic uh, for golfers to understand, right? I would have the. So again, uh, so creases. Well, I, I think you, we, you, we would call this the uh, the cubital faucet. Okay. So let's keep. Yeah. All right. So we can say the pocket or maybe the creases. Pockets, listen, pieces. Listen, we have Dr. Tyson. That's it. Hey, right, right. And, and he's right sitting over the, there, right? The cubital fossa, cubital which fossa. is cubit yeah. means a measurement, elbow. Yeah. A, yeah. Something we came up with. Okay, well, cool. Something, something else. I, something I, 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 I thought of it the other day was when he asked me a question, but yeah, positioning of the elbow. I always okay. call it the dimple of the elbow, okay. and I wanted the anatomical term. So okay, so dimple helps. of the elbow would be kind of positioning it more towards the camera. Towards the camera. Okay, versus. You could have three, 
three locations at the target so yeah towards the camera or 45 degrees in between perfect okay so so i would prefer to have it at the camera or 45 however i do prefer my bunker shots to have it fully inch on rotated well, Both completely elbows completely shot, but different remember, yeah yeah, yeah but uh, i'm telling you yeah. it's a spectrum it's not yeah. locked in for one shot no 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 yeah we can we're still talking about start pattern full swing stuff right, right? The, the, the arms and stuff I'm just can be just expounding upon I know. where the variations mm-hmm. and how they lie yeah. not to have a fixed mind <coughs> i have to hit the same elbow position with each swing yeah okay so um I think that would probably answer the question from Mr. Alex in terms of the, the setup, mm-hmm. in terms of what we'd be looking for in terms of the upper arm, lower arm, uh, wrists. So to review, yep. I would have the lead shoulder internally rotated, elbow mm-hmm. at the target. <coughs> lead, lead forearm would be about 30 degrees, mm-hmm. 30 to 40 degrees. Lead wrist would be about 30 to 40 degrees as mm-hmm. well. And then the trail elbow would have external rotation where the dimple of the elbow would be pointing up to maybe 45 degrees in, mm-hmm. and then the trail hand, the trail wrist would be vertical. Okay. Pretty simple. Yeah. I think we can. And the shoulder would be protracted. Yep, and then that allowed for the retraction. Retraction, and yes, then it get a little bit more protraction. Very little. little. Yes. But three to four it, degrees. It contributes, remember. It contributes three to four yeah. degrees. But not a whole lot. Nope.